In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, using ICT concepts and models in context and why it is critical to apply your discretion and not try and use ICT's models as a binary code or as another indicator or as a pattern trader. Okay, um, ICT's models do constitute patterns, but they must be used with discretion, which is why they cannot be boiled down to uh, automation, or at least in my opinion, ICT concepts are not easily boiled down to automation. Okay, so first off, I want to recommend this video uh, here, The Truth About uh, Trading ICT with Ali Khan. I think this guy is pretty articulate, and then I, I want to directly point to you to uh, the minute 47 marker up into the minute 51 marker where he talks about how you have to use ICT models in context and um, how you have to how you have to apply discretion so uh, with that being said guys let me get to the chart and show you at least a few basic examples of where uh, it would you would need to use ICT models in discretion so for example let's talk about the model of the fair value gap okay so I'm gonna just point out here a bunch of different fair value gaps that we have in the market um, this is not even all of them guys they're all over the place there's no shortage of fair value gaps but <clears throat> I've described to you what the ICT fair value gap model is um, so if you need a, a primer on what the ICT fair value gap model is what I'm pointing out on the chart um, then you'll need to go back to my prior video on how to identify a an ICT fair value gap okay all right, so guys, um, as you can see with my trend line here, I'm on the 10-minute chart. We're on the regular trading hours, and this constitutes the price action for Thursday, uh, the 1st of February, 2024, up until Friday on a 10-minute chart, the regular trading hours, New York local time. Um, again, guys, I'm just pointing out some, but not all, of the ICT fair value gaps. And then I'm going to point out some other basic ICT concepts, which is all right, where would our buy side liquidity have been, uh, which I'm going to mark out here. Okay, so why you cannot use <clears throat> you cannot use an ICT model without context. So here I'm going to show the opposite side of the. Uh, you know I want to keep this video short. I want to keep it digestible and understandable so let's start with uh, down here okay you know we had a ICT sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency followed by an ICT buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency which is sort of located in the same area which uh, I would constitute as an ICT balance price range that information you know where my cursor is these first couple of fair value gaps that I'm showing are not enough that's not enough information with which to take a trade why because you could easily look at this low down here and say hey there's sell side liquidity I think the markets gonna run down on Wednesday's regular trading hour low uh, and it to be frank with you the market did did look like it could have run on that low um, there's certain uh, context that needs to be uh, needs to be applied discretion in order for you to use these models and patterns correctly more often than not guys you don't have to be perfect um, ICT might in full frank in, in full fairness and honesty and disclosure ICT might sometimes make it seem like his models are infallible and then at other times he will contradict himself and openly admit that his models are not infallible I'm here to tell you unequivocally that ICT's models are not perfect. Okay, you will take losses day trading. Uh, you should accept that. Um, money flows up and down. The capital in your account, uh, you have to be very careful with it. You have to manage your money correctly, and you have to be willing to accept losses. Uh, losses are a part of day trading. You cannot avoid them no matter what system you are using, including automated systems. <clears throat> okay, so with that disclaimer out of the way, why does this inverted fair value gap here and this fair value gap here, um, 
why would they lead you to believe that the market more likely than not was going to trade higher? Well, first off, let's get the greater context of the market itself. Okay, the market itself. All right, so I'm going back to the MES on a different chart. The market itself is obviously in a very bullish environment. So right now, uh, guys, we're at all time highs. You should be biased long for the for the most part. And so just that's the very first context, which is what is the overall market trend? Well, clearly, guys, the market has been trending much higher. And so that's the first context that you need to use when looking at this fair value gap. Number two, the second uh, piece of context that you should use. All right. Well, look right here, guys. What did we do? We ran on short term sell side liquidity here, which indicates to you that if we've just run on short term sell side and we have what looks to be like a reversal pattern into a regular trading hours gap, which is another model, then all things considered, more likely than not, the market is going to go run on the opposite side liquidity, which was this buy side liquidity or this buy side liquidity. Okay, so that was another piece of context that you needed to, to, to use in order to, to get the direction correct. All right, so number one, we have the first piece of context, which is the market is overall bullish as of the time of recording this video. Number two, given the fact that sell stops were recently taken, all right, and if you're using ICT's concepts, one of them is offset distribution, which is if the market has recently taken one side of the liquidity, Given other context, it is more likely than not it's going to go run on the opposite side liquidity. All right, so what do we have here? We have short-term stops taken. All right, short-term stops taken. Number three, guys, you always have to look at what time of the day it is, okay? So in this example here, we just had a market pivot at 11.10, which is during the New York regular trading hour session. What does that time of the day tell you? Well, number one, Sessions oftentimes like to run against each other. So the AM session might uh, run against the prior day session. The lunch session likes to run against the AM session. And oftentimes the PM session will like to run against the lunch or the AM session. So we know that. All right. We know that we're in the AM session but going on the lunch session. So that's another piece of context. Then, guys, we are in the New York Stock Exchange regular trading hours, meaning that we are expecting the greatest amount of market sort of movement, uh, volatility. We're expecting a lot more than if we were in the overnight session, uh, potentially not more than like during FOMC uh, or the opening bell. But my point being is that you are expecting a, a greater amount of market movement while the stock market is open as opposed to when the stock market is not open. Okay, so that is number two. The next piece of context after we have stops taken and the time of the day is, guys, this is an ICT classic breakaway gap. I have a video discussing what is a breakaway gap. Well, it's a subcategory of fair value gap, which is the start of a new trend. And if you take that in context with what time of the day it is, what session it is, are the stocks open, and does it appear to be uh, shortly after stops, you know, the opposite side stops were taken, does it appear to be at the start of a, of a potential new trend? There's another piece of context that it's an ICT breakaway gap. Okay, so with that being said, let's move on to the next fair value gap, which uh, is, as we go, guys, I'm going to delete these as we, as we move forward in this video. Okay. So the, uh, the next ICT fair value gap, we can see here that the market traded into, then ran on buy side liquidity, reaccumulated, and was going to go run on further buy side liquidity. Well, guys, this is what's called an ICT institutional order flow entry drill. In other words, the market just dipping into a fair value gap to go run on further liquidity. You cannot look at that second fair value gap without context. What is the context? We're in a bullish market. We've had recent um, earnings. Te uh, uh, tech companies have reported positive earnings. And the Fed is, is getting ready to cut interest rates probably in the March or the June cycle. And if you know anything about the market, it runs on interest rates. And so, guys, if you use that in context, again, we can use that fair value cap to say more likely than not the market is going to go run on more buy side liquidity. It's the same thing when we get to uh, the next fair value gap. When the market trades into it, what, it, what sort of trade is that? That's an IOFED. 
institutional order flow entry drill where it just dips into an inefficiency and then it's going to go run further on uh, the same side liquidity. What time of the day is this? Well, this is right on the closing bell. What do we expect on the closing bell? Greater volatility. Also, given that we're in earnings season and the tech stocks that make up the index itself are reporting earnings, uh, that was a greater sign that we were going to have more market volatility than usual at the closing bell. If you, d if you just look at the chart without the context that I just provided, you do not have enough to make an informed decision. Okay, which is why you cannot really break down ICT's models into uh, into easy cookie cutter uh, algorithms. You, you can't, guys. You can't. You have to have discretion. There's there's no other way to, to, to say that. You have to have discretion. What time of the day it is? Uh, do we have earnings seasons? What has the, the Federal Reserve recently been saying about hiking or cutting interest rates? Remember that the market is heavily influenced by what the... Federal Open Market Committee and Jerome Powell say. So you have to know that context, which ICT talks about that. Okay. Also, not all va fair value gaps are, are the same. The fair value gap is just a broad term that covers multiple categories. Number one, there's the sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, the SIBI, and then there's the buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, which are two subcategories of fair value gaps. Then uh, there are breakaway gaps and there are measuring gaps, which are uh, another way that you can use the fair value gaps. And then there's the inverted fair value gap, which you have to know that as well. And uh, you have to apply that greater context with what time of the day it is and are we expecting more or less than average market volatility given the news, given earnings, given FOMC, and given the, the day of the week. Okay, so that context has to go into it. All right, so let's talk about the next uh, ICT fair value gap here. It's the same exact thing. All right, so we, we are at the opening bell, and this uh, fair value gap came in during the very tail end of the regular trading hours, the closing bell on Thursday. Friday's market opened up near the close on, somewhat near, the close on Thursday, so we know that this is within the first 30 minutes of trading, meaning that we know that it's within the opening range. The opening range oftentimes likes to make what's called a Judas swing or a fake run against the intended direction of the day. Okay, so what do we see here? A little bit of a Judas swing, not a big one, but a little bit of a, of a run against the intended direction for the day. I think, I think you can pretty clearly see that. So... <clears throat> Uh, I, I've decided I'm not going to go through each and every one of these fair value gaps to to try and outline to you that you need to have greater context and a more in-depth understanding of the models at play. And so this is going to push back against some of the criticism against ICT. Guys, I'm not, I'm not calling ICT the holy grail, um, but you cannot merely look at his models such as the fair value gap and simply try and automate it. It just is not going to work. You have to, you have to apply discretion. Okay. So same thing there with the, uh, the other fair value gaps. Now let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at some other models and let's block out Wednesday's trading. So here was Wednesday's trading. Okay. So guys, let's talk about the ICT turtle soup pattern, which is when the market uh, dips above a short-term low or a short-term high and then runs in the opposite direction. Here we have an ICT, arguably, turtle soup pattern here. Now, <clears throat> it was also a fair value gap back here, and it was also a regular trading hours gap. What was Wednesday, the 31st of January, 2024? If you're going to predict that the model is the turtle soup model, right? Let's say that you're using, instead of the fair value gap, the turtle soup model. Well, without trying to, to talk too quickly, which I know I'm already doing, guys, this was FOMC Wednesday. What does ICT talk about major economic news drivers like FOMC? They oftentimes like to, to drive both sides of the market, meaning what? They drive the buy side, they drive the sell side, they drive the buy side, and then they drive the, the sell side, guys. They like to to drive both sides of the market during a high impact news driver like FOMC. He calls that the FOMC two-stage macro. 
You've got to be very, very well studied on your ICT to, to find that one, but it is there. The ICT FOMC two-stage macro. And what did the market do here? It ran above short-term highs and then aggressively ran on short-term lows. Why did the market do that? Because that's oftentimes what it does during FOMC. It runs both sides of liquidity as Jerome Powell is talking. So again, that's greater context being applied to what you're seeing on the chart. If you don't have that background knowledge, you're not making as informed decisions on ICT uh, as you can be. Okay, so that's the ICT turtle soup model. Um, there are so many other ICT patterns that that uh, it would be difficult for me to go through them all, but uh, I think that y'all are seeing the point, guys, which is you cannot you cannot just apply ICT models without greater context or you're going to be misled. Uh, it does not mean that ICT models are perfect and it does not mean that you are not going to take trading losses. You will uh, trade at your own discretion, trade at your own risk. But I hope that this video uh, gave gives you a better understanding of how you have to apply discretion and a greater understanding of context in order to properly use ICT models. Okay, guys, referral links are in the description box below. Bye-bye.